yo yo just doing some account work on epic 7 today might as well record it and save it for the tube right now i'm just getting rid of all the excess three stars i got from the 10 draws every day so we got a new pickup recently and we got rag ragnavald we got a chloe imprint Ains al lagoon I need to get a uh, albedo, and then I'll work on shell tier. Armenta's new Cecilia copy. We can do Navy Captain Landy. Um, the event has the challenge to get units up to sixty. Oh, technically they're already uh, already getting there. I have my lobby pet to do enhanced um, 12, 13% basically. Save on the enhanced costs. That's a pretty good deal, up to 60 for only 20. All right, that's 160 for the mission. <laughs> I got my first uh, four star assassin Sid in literally three years of playing on the Navy Captain, well the, the Navy uh, Navy Captain Landy banner was the ML Selector banner. So I chose ML Landy as my 5 star and Sid as my 4 star and I got one copy of each. And then I, I just had a bunch of Sids already ready to triple S this guy. That being said, there's a new Sid coming out now and all the rest of my copies are gone so we'll see. Ravi's one, Elena, I got a Ken recently, a Bihu, I got them. Leah is being worked on as a new three star. I got the original Huang, uh, Hua Young, when she came out and was busted, and then they nerfed her to the ground. And then they gave the chance to recall her for resources, which I did. And I lost my co copy, and then now I got one back a year later. Biblis is at five. She's ready to go up if she needs to be. The thing is, the last the last year on this account, I've just been logging into farm daily and like get a few units and get out. I've gotten a lot of luck. Like Abigail's like a normal a banner summon. I got one Fumir from a normal banner summon. Like just getting my normal banners every day will eventually get me some uh, some five and four stars that I need. But my account is like mostly complete. In terms of having everybody and stuff. And so in terms of recency, Huang Yang before that Biblis, before that Zio from the ML Selector event. Abigail from Norman, Normal Cecilia. Judge Kisei, this is an imprint, right? I'm pretty sure this is a Kisei Im imprint. I worked on Savior Adin from the base to the f to the light version. I got this done in three days. Three days of all day grinding through the story and the challenges and stuff. I got through this and I got her. I use, I've been using her a little bit, but like all the time I put in, I didn't, haven't really got it back. Another key say, I don't have specimen says yet. So this says will go on specimen since the regular says was not. Dude, says, says was the unit that I got from my when I started my account. He was like my first like five star I got, and he carried me through the most of the story. It's sad I don't see this guy anymore, but um, says was my my adventure hero alongside Arbiter Vildred, I think, or uh, maybe I got Arby later. So we got Kisei, we got Paras here, Mui, Tempest Shun, Rod. So we got Zero Imprint Kisei. 
and we got I got my um, triple S Mirsa just today. What type is? She's a warrior. I didn't even know that. I really don't know who is more valuable, Judge Kise or regular Kise, because in a fast meta, especially with any red opener like. What was her name? I don't know. I'll call her Moon Girl. She's the red, like, moon <laughs> fan or Chinese girl. Knockwall. Maybe against her, like, he said, would be pretty good and stuff. That art is banger as well, too. Holy fuck. So I'm just going to hold it until I know what I'm doing with it, of course. <laughs> so the goal of today... I mean, I need to shop her fine. I shop grinded for like an hour to try to get enough uh, summons. But I don't have enough for Shaltier's Pity or um, Albedo's Pity yet. So I'm at 4.05. Um, Shaltier just came in recently. And then Albedo's here for another week, and I need to get her. She's an Earth Knight. Oh, that really overlaps with the um, the other Earth Knight that, that was popular a while ago. And she's a Warrior Fire. And her performance is based on her numbers, it looks like. Um, I saw Albedo had like a, a buff strip, defense down, speed down or whatever, and it's just like the most insane thing I've seen. Oh shit, so I wanted to pull last, I was supposed to pull last banner for C Phantom Politis to get better five stars here. Oh, and then she's going away next one, and then we get Wondering Captain Sid. Do we know how good she is? Host a ball, making all allies enraged for two turns. It's a better vigor. Okay, a better vigor. The spell's too buff to spell, decrease speed, decrease combat readiness. So what a, what a sick opener. But she obviously needs to be really fast. Decreases the amount of resources gained by the enemy by 50% and start a battle on the end of turn has 50%. Um, that's pretty nuts. That's a very unique skill. Decreased amount of resources gained by the enemy. Is that like the charge, like the energy bars for Ravi, Apoc Ravi. Um... I wonder who else. I wonder what the major interactions with that would be. Tax enemy with phantoms is spelling one buff, so she's just all all, all out buff to this spell. She's like a, yeah, she's like a support turn one, turn one setup for other units. As long as she goes first, you can run everybody else slower because she does a thirty percent decrease or twenty percent, and then she does a speed decrease. I don't know, she seems really strong. I want her, but I wish I pulled last banner. And I don't have enough for pity. Don't so, always sus, don't always sus. It. He's doing it. Yes, finally. Oh my god. Oh. Um I don't know, I'm recording, but I'm like super scared to pull and not get anything and lose my pity and then be forced to scurry to get pity. Your summons ready. I I think a golden rule in this game is only only summon when you're when you have pity. Otherwise, you risk just wasting your resources. Cartusia. I really have never gotten a five star from this. I think this whole summon system is garbage. Even the pity they added later, it doesn't really do anything. But, yeah, who's who's saying that? 
I mean, just look. You can just go to the store and then see the prices and know that like Epic Seven is very whale heavy, and if you want to get everything done. So I only did the story. We have chapter one done, chapter two unlocked. We need some energy for that. But I realize I haven't been doing this sandstorm desert, which is basically like a hunt event, I guess. I should be doing this each day. Oh, I, right. I, won I saw this and I was like, I should level up Irons to use him. And then I should level up Albedo once I get her. And that's what I was thinking. I have a special MMO gaming mouse that has the numbers on the side that I use for shop refresh. It's unplugged. I gotta plug it in. Oh, it's yeah, it's not really covered in dust. Ah, uh, fuck it. I don't know, shop refresh? Maybe I do it for a bit, and then I... Because I don't have anything to do. I have all the energy saved up. Uh, I'm going to shop refresh to try to get to 600 summons. And maybe I'll just cut it out of the video or whatever. I use the one button to refresh and then the two to confirm. Health, crit chance. So the equipment score is bad, the subs are bad. Later. I'm watching Genizad do his RTA with Shoutier testing. That's the only reason he's up still. I got Kadra on doing his solo queue grind every day, just running it down. I know it's fun for him, but it's it's kind of weird champ that he just watches League all the time and then plays League and then... I don't know. It's harder to be... A it's, it's, not, it's not as fun of a viewing experience, that's for sure. He's more... He, now he's just a background streamer for me. And then I'm watching MBT uh, on re-watching, reacting to episode 13 or Master Saga. Number 13. They did like a two week break and then did 14 like recently, so he's almost caught up. Oh, my first uh, Mystic. I, I kind of want to see Polly, so I think she's worth getting. I think I have an extra copy laying around too. I had two copies of Politis because there existed a regular Politis for Cleave. And a degen politis for like counter and just getting the CP or combat readiness decrease side effect. So it's pretty important to have two politis on your account, level 60 and like ready to go. Now we have a third. And I might have a copy for it or it might not be a copy ready. I don't really use my slates for anything though, so I could start using my slates on stuff. As I find it enjoyable. Yeah, it's a little bit laggy. A little bit of lag. And then I I hurt my wrist so much doing this. I need to be able to turn my wrist the proper direction, so I need to I I, I slacked uh gave it some more slack on the cord. I want to do this on my tablet because I usually shop refresh on my tablet. It's a little bit faster. Um, but my tablet just can't open the game when I get to the login screen. It hits an invalid file error. 
which has never happened before this recent patch. So, um, either something with the patch screwed up or something unique happened on my tablet to cause something bad to happen. Oh, I don't need to click the second one. I can just left mouse button click <laughs> and save myself some thumb trauma. Just click the one to open and then confirm. I did open up uh, solo leveling to do the gate missions this morning. And I, I could have played it instead of doing this, but Genozad's got Epic 7 up, Albedo's on a time limit. I don't know, being on a time limit makes me want to do and interact more. I swear they'd nerf the rates, because I'll just hit a super dry period like this. I don't know. <laughs> The game is so predatory, dude. Oh, if you want to summon, spend hours of your time doing shop refreshes with the the sky stones that take weeks to to load up on, and then you get a chance at one unit, and you have to do it again next time. If I wasn't so invested in this game, I wouldn't give a shit about this game. And the main issue is like when I log in, if I log in and I don't interact with anybody and just play the game by myself and log out. Like, that's really, it's really not enjoyable, and it's not sustainable for me, who needs, I need social interaction with the game to motivate me to keep playing and keep progressing, and like, reach, reach the end for some, some purpose outside of myself. So, even though I've been a degen in gacha games for the last few years, as I'm depressed, lonely, and just doing my own thing every day, and I just need something to do with videos and stuff. Um, these games are, uh, yeah, these games are shit, like, these games aren't, I, I, I keep it as a long, long-term, like, side, like, part-time job, side project, for funsies. This game, like, has RTA that I could eventually get into, but my gear, uh, gearing is just so unfun in this game, and my gear is just not, even though I put gears and, in, like, into good gears, getting all these plus 15s, it's just, like, it's just shit, some of it's just shit gear, I mean... I YOLO a lot of gear, and I, I, I just want enough plus 15s to have, like, enough choices and variety. But I have, like, hundreds of thousands of crafting mats that I've never used. I've always just farmed during the hunt buffs. Never used it because my inventory is always full of shit. I don't have... I can't make more stuff, which always costs gold, which I never wanted to get out of. And whatever you get from farming the buff is what filled up my whole inventory. And then going through all the shit that I save from the just from the drops, not even the crafting, is like it just tires me the fuck out and makes me want to quit the game. No more gearing. But if I don't gear, I can't get RTA ready units to play RTA. And then there's nothing else to do in the game. It's like, this, I mean, yeah, it's the same problem every gotcha has. Where if they want to make it pay to win and let you pull and do as much as you want. They can't really make PvP aspect because guess what? It's fucking unbalanced. The whales are just gonna shit on people and feel good about themselves, and everybody else is just gonna quit because all they do is queue up into whales who pay more. <laughs> like the draft thing in, Ep in Epic Seven is the first breakthrough for PvP that's not based on how much you paid for your account to get progressed. And I mean, time is a factor, of course, in these games, especially with how much you have to grind and farm in this game. But money can always replace time. So, I don't know. I don't like this game. I would never recommend Epic 7 or really many gotchas to any, to any r r random normie. Um, any normie with a bad spending problem will get into these games and lose more money quickly while they're immersed in like the first the first month is like i don't know gacha games really only have a life li lifetime of one month and then you either have friends or some ultimate like outside of the game reason to keep playing or you quit it and move to the next one and if you're i don't know any content creator anybody who's like a gacha fanatic and who just loves playing gachas and like switching it up like you have to be free to play unless you're just insanely rich and have Hundreds of, hundreds of dollars to spend a month on wasting on gacha. 
which I've done, but I don't do anymore. I'm saving up big bucks in the bank for house payments and stuff. So that'll be coming soon. And then even then, even when I'm playing like Soul Leveling Arise, I've only spent like what, 50 to 70 dollars tops in that game. I really went crazy in Eversoul last year. Eversoul January 2022, when it came out, I really hoped that game would be big. Because I've been playing Epic 7 for a long time. And then Eversoul came out, I was like, I wanted my chance to be at the start of a game. I wanted to get in at the launch. And I wanted to hard progress and be one of the best players in the server. And just be a guild leader, have like people who want to come around, hang out, and have fun in the game. But Eversoul, Eversoul was a really bad game because the guild system didn't really promote interaction with players. I was a guild leader and I had a guild full of people who did not interact, um, quit often, and there was, there was nothing to do as a guild. Even the events where it's like, oh, world boss, go fight it three times and then you're, you're rest, you get a ranked based on how you do it compared to your guild mates and there's like an overall guild ranking of the event and stuff. And like, it's the right idea, but the game for me as a, never had a single way to interact with anybody. I made my own discord and I put it in the guild uh, meeting info. Nobody ever joins. The one guy who did join a guy named Devin hung out in there for a few months being like a consistent player. And I, I quit like honestly two months in. This guy played for like four or five months, and I think he might still be playing, but he, he just left the, the guild, left the Discord, and uh, he doesn't interact with me anymore. But I, I don't know, if he's still playing Eversoul, like, that game's got him by the balls somehow. I don't know. I went so hard in the game. I paid for so many of the packs, just trying to progress and have fun and... There, there just comes a point where you just keep going, and especially when you're spending money, and there just needs to be a reason for it. And when you're just doing the same things over and over again for monotonous routine, you, you can justify putting money into that. So at least in Epic 7, for all the time and all the money I've invested, I have the potential to go into RTA, and I've always really wanted the options. I wanted all the units to be able to play the fun teams that I can think of or that are fun in the meta and stuff. I want to have options so I'm not sucker punched into a few units to use for RTA because that's, that's just not how the game mode is built to be done. The problem is I can only gear so many units well and I need to do like a whole cleaning of bad gear Re re-leveling new gear, wasting all my losing all my charms again, farming another few months for more charms. It's just a vicious cycle. And I'm like really close to paying someone like Deity or some streamer who offers the services to like open your account, review my gear, um, take a take a look and grind out things that are just not going to be usable or. I don't know, help me set the bar for my gear. That's what I need a streamer to do or someone more knowledgeable is to help me set a bar for my gear and how to delineate the ones above and below. Get rid of the ones below. I guess selling your plus 15s now gets you some enhancement material at the base ones. They're not good, but they're not bad. So you can ditch your plus 15s for some enhancement materials back. But it does feel really bad because you've lost all that. When you plus 15 and then you sell it, I think you're losing probably 80% of the investment resources. So that's that's really rough. Um, yeah, it's really, like shop refreshing just makes me want to yap because I'm not, I'm so putting 20% of my energy into it and my eyes are just scanning for key visuals like the summon bookmarks. The colors and like 85 and red 85 purples are like very rare to be good very rare I got some oatmeal here too and I got work meetings starting in 20 minutes so that's also a timer I'm on
I gotta stop buying plain oatmeal. Even with blueberries, even with cinnamon on top, even with a, a milk instead of water. It still tastes like shit. It tastes so bad. I don't know if it's even worth it, because it's just regular, like, normal oatmeal. It's just bland as fuck. And I mean, bland, oat, normal oatmeal it probably has less uh, enhancements in it. It might be more of just the fiber base. But it still sucks. <laughs> I rotate between, right now I have a cinnamon Kodiak cakes, or Kodiak bites or whatever. Cinnamon oatmeal, or cinnamon protein oatmeal. I like, I'm trying to get protein oatmeal always so I can have protein at the start of my day in a little bit. Because I, I want to work out. I want to work, build muscle. I want to be someone who can be proud of my physique. And to do that, I just need to pump protein all day and work out every day. I'm doing a push-pull cardio split for the most part. But um, I've just been kind of freestyling lately. But my general my general framework is definitely push pull cardio. I like that three day split. I have most of the stuff for it and um feels feels pretty decent. The only thing is I ordered a I ordered a barbell. It's I wanted a barbell thing and it but it came as like I ordered like a red um two dumbbells with like four weights. And you can either put the weights on the end and put a s screw on a bar in the middle and it becomes a barbell with handles on the end. Or you get rid of the bar in the middle and it becomes just two dumbbells with weights on it. And the problem is it's not heavy enough. It's not heavy enough to be a barbell because it's only like 50 pounds. I, I need like 80 pounds to do chest press. So I'll either need to order something else or... The thing is to do chest, I can just use um, um, wide arm push-ups, but I also have like bars you can hold on the ground to do push-ups instead of putting my hands on the ground. I just hold the bars and lower my body down that way. Because when I did regular push-ups on the ground, I, I really felt like I was fucking up my wrist a lot and it was really painful. So I got the bars so I could hold on to something and do push-ups instead and that's been pretty nice. I have to say though, yesterday I did wide arm push-ups using my hands on the ground and then use the bar. It feels so different. When you're pushing off the ground with just your body weight and then you still feel that push on your wrists, it's like you, you get to feel yourself directly touching the ground and pushing straight off with your palm, where when you're doing the handles, you're just gripping the handles and you're, you're iron locking your wrists and stuff. You really, that's what could be used the... <laughs> The, the arm bracelets for it or the wrist wraps could be better for the bar anyway and I have wrist wraps I just put them away because they weren't useful and they when I did try to use them they weren't useful but if you do wrist, wrist wraps with your um, bars for push-ups that's pretty that's pretty uh, that's a pretty good combo because the only, only danger of using the bars is losing your wrist lock and then falling or and hurting yourself or something. So as long as you keep those wrists locked in and you can hold an iron grip, you can just lower yourself up and down and do your push-ups. But yeah, doing wide arm push-ups is like the only real way I have to do chest workouts. Because my, my body is like 180 pounds or something, 180 to 200 pounds. As a, a a six foot guy with a little bit of a little bit of flub, I'm not fat, um, but I definitely have more fat in some areas, like my hips and my lower tummy and my butt, than um, would be appreciated. So I'm gonna try to in with the out with the fat, in with the muscle. Like I think I don't think working on glutes, like for girls, it's all about legs and glutes, but as a guy, I guess it's mostly just like upper body. And then some legs and getting the glutes into a nice way for the pants that I want to wear. But otherwise, I don't know. I don't really know as a guy, like as a girl looking at a guy, what really is attractive and what isn't. Because when I, when I wear pants that are like form fitting, I feel fat. But when I see like male fashion idols dressing up and stuff, 
they don't wear like flat pants in the back. They wear form fitting pants that like they have they have, they have a curve. But it's like when I have a curve, I just I mean I, that's it's just, it's just it's just in your mind. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't get enough uh, positive feedback on my appearance, so I just have a permanent negative mentality. And I comp I've been compensating the last few years by like trying to buy nice clothes, working out to some degree. Now that my roommates are gone, I can actually utilize the common area and work out, which is making it feasible to do everyday workouts and actually getting involved rather than small workouts in my room for just like sanity of getting your muscles moving. Yeah, I got rid of them gone, more space. I can use my treadmill out there under in front of my big TV under the fan. Which I did yesterday, and it actually, it's tough running and feeling that cold air blowing down on you. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but it's way better than being hot, so I like that. I have an eye high ankle sprain from high school soccer, and I was running on the treadmill yesterday, and I, I finished at my mile and a half, like, really painfully, and I looked down to my right, my right ankle, and it looks like a fucking, it looks like it's getting to a baseball down there. It's, like, so swollen and messed up. So apparently from one from my only sprain in my whole soccer career I have permanent ligament damage in my right ankle. So that's very disheartening. As someone who wants to be physical and improve themselves, be part of like recreational sports and try to impress guys or girls with some decent level of athletic ability that I was just I'm just born with. I have some good coordination ability and able to move my body. Ooh, a back to back. Yeah, so I got to watch the ankle. I need to get the brace cuz when I broke when I sprained it, I had to use a boot for a few weeks for school. So that that boots at my parents' house. I can get the boot out and anytime I fuck it up really badly, I can put the boot on to take all the pressure off. I really like I want to have something inside the boot that like wraps it and has like ice on it. So I want like a, I want like a brace that has like ice on the inside of the brace and then you put the boot over top of that ice pack. So you get to ice, you get to stabilize and take the weight off of it and just do the most to bring it down. But it makes sense though. If if it's something that continues to happen um time after time, it's it's just permanent damage. Resting it and icing it. Gage is not a good Yu-Gi-Oh player. So thank you for coming to my Yap session. This was meant to be an Epic 7. Um, I don't know. I, I, I was just going to get into the event stuff today, try to do pools, and work on Ein's Al Goon for the side story. I don't know, but once I see that side story page, I'm like, I don't really want to start it unless I get my guys leveled up. Like, the chance I get Albedo in my 500 summons is pretty decent. But it's not guaranteed. Not guaranteed is a problem. And then Shaltier. I don't know. I think the, the, the definitely the skills from Albedo were, were bigger and better. They're both limited, so I need to get one, if not both. Albedo's on the quicker timer. I mean, Jenna's using her Albedo, but Jenna also went triple S and went fucking nuts on it. Content creator who gets premium currency from the game for being a content creator. But as a content creator, like you by nature have to spend more to get more time and things to do in the game. The guy has enough money to spend 1600 or Jenna has enough money to spend 1600 on a 4090 just recently. Like, I could get a whole new brand, like, decent computer. The saddest story is I tried to get a PC game, a gaming PC. I got all the parts and the, the tower for it, a, like, almost six months ago now. And I took the time to get all the parts, order them. I used an article that was unfortunately outdated. I didn't realize at the time. 
and I bought a bunch of pieces that I put together and it all just it doesn't work um, I guess some of the SATA the connections from the power source to the CPU don't work because the CPU fan is orange when I try to boot it up so the, it doesn't turn on it just hits the orange light from the CPU fan I don't know which connection I made is wrong I need like an expert to review it so I just have a $1,100 PC that I invested in sitting in my closet in a bo in my box and that and it doesn't work it doesn't even turn on so I'm not buying PC as parts anymore and building it thinking oh they make it so easy they all you gotta do is get the parts and then put them in their spots and plug them all in and it'll work no that's not true they they make this shit and they, there's no guide I, I can't buy the pieces even the article isn't a guide on how to make it it's just a guide about the parts and it was a fucking I ordered it prematurely. I thought, oh, article, good. Top of the Google list. Just send it on those pieces and build it. And the piece, the, the articles from three years ago, the pieces by themselves are not compatible. So the article maker completely fucked up. The BIOS needs to be updated to even work with the given motherboard before it even boots. To, to get it to boot, I had to order like an older generation cpu to try to get it to start thinking maybe that's the problem but no the problem is just like the the cpu fan orange light thing doesn't work and it doesn't turn on and then luckily i sent back the uh, the second cpu i got and i saved like the 90 bucks i would have lost on that so it's just a shithole investment at this point until i either find a professional who can take a look at it and try to correct the connections and get it to run correctly and then I can use it as a streaming slash gaming PC or I find a friend who can do it or I just have it sit there and troubleshoot it myself in a year which I don't I don't know how to I don't know what what path I could take to rearranging it and fixing it and the work required to find that out would be immense to maybe not even work so I really don't want to do it myself but if I don't do it myself it won't get done so that's just a depressing thing in the back of my mind just something for me to think about and hate myself for even though I mean I've, I've bought pre-built PCs for like my last two PCs that I have and I don't like getting rid of stuff like getting rid of a PC that's fucking weird to me a defense boot with uh, defense stats um Okay, like this is kind of this is kind of crazy. Only someone like Crow or like a tank unit that wants defense would ever run something like this. But on Crow, assuming you don't want speed boots, this is probably best in slot. Now, someone like Crow is completely on meta. Most of the defense units like ML Sermia or um, who's the big boobed lady with the deep sea monster Arya even them who like defense like you probably still want speed boots because that's it's your main source of speed you need speed to actually be able to play the game you can't 90% 90, 90 of units cannot operate on no speed so do I YOLO and get this boot that I'm... No. It's too niche. Maybe it could be... I don't know. You want to find a better one on somebody that needs a... I mean, but defense? Like... If it was just HP, you know, that would just be better. Uh, we got 10 minutes till my meeting. Uh, it's fucking time to send it. <laughs> that way I can run the side story in the background. I'm gonna wait to see which um which the community likes more between Albedo and Shaltier in the next few days before I pull actually. 
Um, so that's gonna that's gonna wrap up today's session. I'll um, I'll come back to do the second part of side side story. But this was just for me logging in. I'm in my morning time, just playing mobile games before work meetings. And once work starts, I'll do my scrum updates. And I'm a software dev, so I'll check out my work items and do a little bit of progression on the tasks. Um, get some of my functionality set up, make my UI changes a little bit, and get a little bit done each day. But it's just a job at the end of the day. At least I can work from home. Um, I wish the camera was more to the left, but it doesn't really matter. Alright, peace out, Ghost Scouts. Later.